Hey there, everybody. Welcome to Teen Craft with Gina and William. Hi, everyone. <laughs> you are in the closet at the library. And if you look behind us, you'll see all of our our STEM stuff, all of our craft stuff, but so you are in places that you don't normally get to go. Anyway, this is our first craft for Teen Craft, and we are going to be making... We're going to be making these really cool wands. And I know this one doesn't look very good. This was my little example wand that I made, but we're going to make one a little bit better than this because I know I can do a better job, and if you guys follow along, hopefully you'll be able to make a really cool one as well. Yes, and this is my first time too. So anyway, I'm sure that you guys will come up with something really, really beautiful because every time you come to Teen Craft, you always make some really beautiful things and our stuff just looks like, eh, anyway. <laughs> but um, we want to tell you about a couple of things that we have going on. If you come over and sign up for summer reading, which I'm sure most of you have already done, but you can do that either in the community room or you can do it online. So if you go to madisonlive.org and then go to the summer reading page or you can click on teen scene page and it will take you straight to the summer reading page it will show you all of the wonderful fun things that we are doing this summer and um, some of the stuff that I can tell you about we are having a teen writers contest this is for writers ages 12 to 17 and let me just tell you some of the logistics they have to be um you can go up to three thousand words and it's on a fractured fairy tale because what is our theme this year so our theme for summer reading is fantasy it is imagine your story so using your imagination all things that come from the fantastical world of wizards dragons knights fairy tales exactly so you can write a fractured fairy tale if you're not quite sure how to do that go ahead and google it and you'll figure out how to do it anyway but um the prizes are incredible so first prize for this writing contest is a 50 dollars amazon gift card second prize is a fat cats they donated a uh, uh, a date pack which has a pass to go to the movies and it has candy in it and it has popcorn in it and it has drinks and it has so it's just like way totally cool and fun and then third prize is actually a free corsage and boutonniere from Rexburg Floral and whenever you guys get to go to dances again this might be great for you so you don't have to pay for those flowers which can get really expensive so if you are a writer or if you just even want to try it out you should give that one a go and if you go to the teen summer reading page it will tell you everything about this contest some other things that we have coming up is on Monday we are going to do anime club with Mina Nina and she's going to show us anime art and if you're interested in that then you need to go and click on the on the teen page you need to click on my name and I will give you a zoom invite she's going to do two parts so it'll be this month and next month okay and then so the other activities we've got coming up next Wednesday for those of you who have signed up we are doing a Dungeons and Dragons night for the teens it's going to be on Wednesday at 4 o'clock for those that have signed up. This is invitation only. However, if we get people to sign up in the future, we should be able to keep doing these events. So if you're interested in that, be sure mm -hmm. to check out our website and you can sign up there. Mm -hmm. And then next Friday, right? Next Friday, right? Next Friday. Yeah. We are watching The Princess Bride here at the library. This is part of our book club. Now, you don't have to have read the book to come. We just want people to come and enjoy the movie. We're going to be doing some interactive things with the movie. So yeah. come prepared to quote along, applaud, boo at Count Rogan, yeah. whatever. Come and enjoy the movie right. on Friday, the 26th. Yeah, so it's going to be an interactive movie experience. So, like, whenever they poison with the Iocane powder, we'll probably have, like, little little um, tubes of, like, Kool-Aid or something that we could put in our water so that we can drink it with them. So, anyway, except I don't think we're going to be poisoned. Anyway. I'm immune. You're immune. <laughs> so, anyway, that'll be really cool. So, uh, those are some of the things that we have going up. Um, if you're interested or you're a little bit confused, just give us a call and anybody can give you um, some directions on anything that we're doing. But we hope you're enjoying your summer and we hope you have fun with these craft kits that we are doing. So I'm going to say, okay, William, let's get going with our wands. All right. So now if you have the craft kit, you've got all the supplies you need for or this in the bag. If you didn't get to sign up for a craft kit, we have a couple left you can sign up for. So you can come in and get this in this video. You'll be able to watch it down the road. 
But if you also want to, you can find most of these supplies at your home or at a craft store, even at Walmart. So you can go ahead and join us for this craft, even if you haven't signed up for a craft kit. Right, and there is a list of all of the craft supplies that we are doing. If you did not get a kit, then we have a list of them on the website too. So you can go there too. Okay. So let me tell you what you're going to need for today's craft. We're going to need, you're going to have a pen. You need a simple ballpoint pen. Don't use a fancy pen. Just use like, we're using simple Bic black pens. You need a simple piece of printer paper, just plain white printer paper. Now I'm going to be using, I'm going to hand one of those to Gina. Okay. I'm going to be using, this is tissue paper. If you got one of the kits, you have this in there, but I'm just going to be using tissue paper. Gina is going to be using something slightly different. She's going to be using the hot glue gun and this is how we're going to decorate ours. The other things you need, you're gonna need if you're using the paper, the uh, tissue paper. You're gonna need scissors. You're also gonna need some glue. Oh, and do we need paint? Do we need skewer sticks to roll up around? Yes. Oh, you know what? We have skewer sticks, and right here, one he's second. gonna go grab some really quick. They are. So the skewer sticks make it really easy to roll the tissue paper. So all right. So, when we do our texturing, I guess that's really what it is. Sorry, I need that's to look on the camera. Yeah. All right. Okay. So once you've got everything together, we're going to go ahead and we're just going to jump right in. Okay. All right. So, so we don't need the lid. Okay. So the first thing you do is you have to roll your paper. And I'm going to pull out my craft example because it's actually got it decently well. It's going to go right there. All right. So you're going to want to roll your paper. And the way you're going to want to do this is you're going to go ahead and want to start at the corner. Now what I found works really well is if you bend it like this and then kind of pull towards you, it helps to create a gentle curl to the paper. Okay, so once you've got that started, you're actually going to want to take your pen and you're going to want to start to wrap your paper around your pen. Okay, and you're going to want to, now normally you'd want to keep this really tight to the pen, but you want to keep one end tight and let the other end be kind of loose. This is going to create like a cone shape for a wand. So we're going to wrap, and you might have to do this a couple times. So is this corner part a little bit more tight, the bottom? Mm. The corner part, I found it works if you start by wrapping it really tight and then just follow up your pen like this. Okay. And if you just kind of pull the pen out and just go with the pen, it helps to create that nice cone shape. Mm. I kind of go like... Okay. Like that. All right, so let me show you that again. Sorry, let me make sure I can get okay. mine. So okay. start off. Wow, something went flying. That was fun. Okay. Not my fault. All right. Start off at a nice good angle. So just kind of like you were going from corner to corner, start off that way. Okay. And like I said, go ahead, start it off and then move your pen, pull your pen out towards the side a little bit and then move your fingers up along the paper as you're doing this. So. You just kind of keep going like that. I'm going to go ahead and turn this around so you guys can see. I'm going to try it from this side. So he's doing really well. Mine is taking a little bit. Okay. I'm going to push it up that way. So if you guys can see that, I hope you can see. I'm going to hold this up so you guys can take a look at what this looks like. So you kind of have it just kind of folded around there like that. And then like I said, you're just going to keep rolling it and pull your pen out as you go. Okay. Until you get to the other angle. Yep. And it should. Whoa! As I drop the glue gun, I'll get it. Okay, how's that? There you go. Is that right? Yep, that's exactly right. Okay, and your pen should okay, be sticking out of the here. tip. And the reason we want your pen sticking up out of the tip like that is because you're actually going to glue your pen in place and you're going to use that to actually write with. So this is going to be a, pen, a wand that can write. Now, once you've got your paper rolled like this, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want your bottle of glue. Now, what I found works best is actually super glue for this job, but you can use just normal Elmer's glue. It's just going to take a little bit longer to dry. So here we go. I think I'm, out. I'm better. Sorry about that. Nope, you're I'm fine. dancing with the glue gun. Okay. So what you want to do with the Elmer's glue is just put a little bit of a dab, not even a large amount. I don't know if you guys can see that, but you just want the tiniest little bit on it and then you're just going to press it shut just on the corner there. And you're going to hold that until it's dry. Okay, I'll get mine on there. Okay. Just 
a little bit like that. Yep, just a tiny bit like that. In fact, that's a little bit much, so trying to spread it out a little bit. Okay. Okay, so I'm spreading mine out because I got a little bit too much. So I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna okay. scrape off that excess glue. That's why we've got the cardboard here. Okay. Okay. So it shouldn't take too long for it to actually form a nice stick and you should be free to move forward after that. Now, okay. at this point, you might want to consider gluing your pen in place too. And to do that, you simply take your glue and you're gonna put a little dab of glue right on the inside of that circle. Do we, do we trim off this end if we don't like it? You know, that? I didn't, but you can. If you really want to, you can. I, I think, think it gives I it some character. To. I'm gonna trim mine. Okay. And then you just kind of stick that in there and let that dry as is. Okay. Now, if you need to at any point, feel free to pause the video, rewind. That way you can kind of stay with so us. I'm putting it in. Yep, you just put it right inside the tip there. Okay. And then I put my pen in. Yep, just slide it right on in. Now, okay. some people also trim off the end as well, but I'm not going to, okay? Now, the next thing you need, I totally forgot, paper, other paper, one second. Okay, so this is mine. I think I'm going to take mine and I'm going to trim mine off. Let me move my hot glue gun because it's just making me nervous. Okay. There we go. Okay. Um, I think I'm going to trim mine off. Okay. Well, she's doing that. I'm going to show you what you're going to do next. So the ending here, it's kind of squishy. So you want to actually pack it full of something. And what I used is I just used paper. You can grab any piece of trash paper you have laying around. And you could even use a little bit of tissue paper, but it's not gonna work as well. So for this, all you're gonna do, this is the hardest step, I promise you. You're gonna wad it up into a little ball, and you kinda wanna make it a little bit cone-shaped, if you can, so that you can make a nice plug for that end of the wand. And you'll really wanna squish it down so that it doesn't squish out. And then, similar to what we did with the pen, we're gonna stick it in there, but we want to- <laughs> I found it my dad to make mine flat. <laughs> Similar uh, to the tip, okay. you want to take a little bit of glue and put it in there. Okay, so there's a little bit of glue right on the inside. And then okay, you so just kind of stick that inside. Yeah, so I'm taking mine, yep. just like that, and making it into a cone. Yep, okay. and just squish it down enough. And, and then what I did, glue in, but I'm going to make it smaller. Is I actually went ahead and put a little bit more glue on the tip of that. Although I'm going to make mine with a little bit of a lip. On and the I went ahead and just kind of folded this over a little bit, so it gives it a nice rounded end. Doesn't have to look the best, but if you can, the nicer you can make it look, the better. So I have that all folded in. Okay, so mine. I'm gonna do mine a little bit different than what he's doing. I've got glue all over my fingers. Yeah. Worst feeling in the world. This is great glue. I don't like glue. <laughs> so what I did with mine is I've made an end on it so that it looks like it has a little bit of a, there we go. That's what I'm doing with mine. So if you see that one, so I have a little bit of a, a ridge on it. That's what I decided. That's my wand, so. <laughs> anyway, so you can kind of see. Right. There you go. So at this point, There's you should have a nice looking wand like structure. That looks great. So we're going to set that as I'm going to set mine aside for a little bit. And I'm going to do something slightly different from Gina. What Gina is going to do is she's going to decorate hers using hot glue. I'm going to show you a different way you can decorate this if you don't have a hot glue gun, and that's using our tissue paper right here. So we want to cut, start by cutting our tissue paper into strips. Uh, I do about a third of the sheet, and you can cut these in half. You might want to cut these in half so they're not so long. That makes it easier for them to roll. But I'm going to just start by cutting it into thirds. Right. Very good thirds. Very good. You know, beautiful. Uh, completely lopsided, but beautiful. And this is where we want the skewer. This is why I had to get up and grab the skewers. Because in order to roll these things, you are going to start by wrapping them around the skewer. 
and you're just gonna kind of like we did with the paper but instead of going kind of at an angle so it's a cone like the wand we want these to be nice and tight to the skewer as tight as you can get them okay you just wrap them around the skewer like so and it should form so what he's really making is like a rope of tissue paper sort of he's twisting and twisting it and making it long and long and long so that he can do texturing on the wand with it and if if you look at mine so here's mine right here i'm going to just take mine and i'm just going to do the texturing with the hot glue gun so as he's doing that i'm going to take mine so that my glue can dry but i think right. i want i want to add some more up here at the end and i'm going to just kind of go around here because i want kind of a knobby handle sort of thing on mine and i'm going to just decorate using the hot glue gun so you can use either way we know that some of you guys don't have hot glue guns at home. That's why we gave you some glue, some Elmer's glue, so that you can see what at, what William is doing. All right. So. so while she's busy decorating her wand, I'll keep showing you this. So once you've got your tissue paper to this point, you're going to have the little flag sticking up, just like we did with the edge of the wand. I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit of the Elmer's glue on there. And I mean a little bit. A little goes a long way, especially with tissue paper, where it has a tendency to bleed through. So, and then I'm just gonna kinda wrap it tight around. And any excess glue, you can just scrape that off just as best you can. I'm stealing your skewer, you don't You're need just it. fine. I'm just making a lot of... Making a mess like me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm we're good at that. We're, we're good at making messes. <laughs> so I'm blowing my, I'm blowing mine, so if you like, there's, I did a little end on mine. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm just going to blow it and get it to dry a little bit. All right. But I'm not going to blow William's thing. <laughs> we'll blow his, his tissue. So. so once you've got your, tish, your tissue paper all rolled up, you should have a nice stick like this. And you're going to want to go ahead and just flatten that down just a little bit. So just kind of run your fingers along it like so to just flatten it down. I'm about to poke Gina here. <laughs> there we go. Go both ways. You might get some glue on your fingers as you approach the spot where you glued. So you'll notice it's thicker in some spots than others. So you should have this. And you're going to do two, three, four of these things. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start my second one. Gina's going to show you how to do some yeah, really we'll cool patterns with the hot here. glue there. Okay, so with mine, what I think I want to do, and you could do whatever you want to, but I think I'm going to do another one. You could easily do the elder wand, which would be easy to do, but I'm going to just, I'm going to do, I think I'm going to just do some um, kind of like vines and see if I can make vines glow up. It's kind of maybe like Hermione's wand. So does her wand have vines on it? I think it does. It kind of has pretty little um, vines that work its way up. So I'm going to just kind of I wish I'm you really could see. Attention much. I like Newt's wand. That's my favorite wand. You like Newt's wand? It's nice and simple, and it just looks. It makes me think of his kind of character. Ah. So, fun fact about the Harry Potter films is they get to the actors get to choose their own wand when they get to the set. I had heard that. Mm -hmm. I had totally heard that. So. It's so kind of a fun thing there. If you ever get to be in a Harry Potter movie, you get to pick your own wand. wand. <laughs> But I guess this is kind of like doing that because you can design your own wand in any way that you want to. So I'm going to see if I can put some, uh, I'm going to put some flowers on mine, maybe some leaves and see what happens with that. I'm going to glue the second one, just tiny bits of glue. That is way too much glue for this, oh well. Oh. Did you guys know that if you go to um, Pottermore.com that you can listen to the different actors reading Harry Potter? Really? Yes, it is really cool. So the very first chapter, who do you think that they got to read the first chapter of um, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone? But if it's in England, it would be Harry Potter and the Philosopher's, and the Philosopher's Stone. Stone. Who do you think they got? Uh, I would guess Ruby is Hagrid. 
Nope, it was Daniel Radcliffe. Oh, so. <laughs> anyway. It's just Daniel Radcliffe. It's not like he's one of the most famous wizards ever. I know. <laughs> so if you guys want to listen to famous people read Harry Potter, you can go to Hot- Pottermore and do All right. that. So you so. want to show them what you do it? Okay. You've been doing there? Show it up to the sure, camera? Sure, let me get there. So let me just kind of show you what I'm doing. Um, whenever I see wands, there we are. Sorry, I'm looking at the wand and not the camera. There we go. Whenever I see wands, um, they always seem to have a beginning and the middle part right there. So I, for me, I put an edge here and I put a little, um, a little edge over here. And now I'm just kind of decorating it with kind of like vine type texture in the middle. And for a wand, that's actually a really good thing because you will be able to hold it better. So it gives you a little bit of, of a grip, I think. So I'm going to keep decorating. Or flying on your bloom stick. All right, so let yeah. me show you what you're going to do. <laughs> Once you've got your rolled tissue paper and you flatten that out, I'm only doing two of these things. I'm actually going to... So I've only done two of these things, and that's all I'm going to need. You're actually going to take them, and you're going to go ahead and just put a little tiny bead of glue here on the base of your wand. And then you're going to go ahead and take one of your tissue paper strings, and you're just going to hold it right there, attach it right there. Okay? And then what you're going to do, oops, if it stays put, mine did not, come on. All right, let's get it right there. You can always trim it later, so don't be afraid to mess up. Okay. You know, gonna, yeah, go ahead. You're going to go ahead and want to start wrapping that around your wand just in a spiral. Okay. And looks like it's holding all right. You were about to say something, Gina? I was just going to say, a lot of times um, when you think that you're messing up, especially with a craft or something, you're actually making something pretty cool. I really like what Bob Ross always says, happy accidents. Oh, uh, yeah? There are mistakes, just happy <laughs> I accidents. Love Tribute Bob to Bob Ross. <laughs> yes. I like that man. All right. And like Gina, I'm also going to kind of stop right here, and I'm just going to trim the rest of that off. But first, I'm going to go ahead and glue it down. Okay. I'm going to let that glue, and I'm just going to take my scissors. Just gonna snip that off because I kind of like the idea of you having just kind of like the middle pattern where your wand just kind of mm-hmm. sits. So you've got this smooth upper part and you've got kind of a fancier grip and fancier handle. I okay. love it. That's pretty neat. Okay, so here's mine. If you can see it, it's kind of hard to see. Okay. Uh, and then I'm gonna take my second one and I'm actually gonna line it up so it matches where I ended with that first one. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit of glue right on top of that. Ooh, that's a bit much. There we go. I'm going to have to clean that glue bottle later. And just start wrapping it down. And it's going to cross over that other one you've already done. This gives it a really slick looking handle. I had to re-flatten mine a little bit as I go, kind of shifting it with the thing. And I'm at the base. So I'm going to go ahead and so it looks like you're crossing it over. Mm-hmm. So you're doing crisscrosses with yep. the two pieces. You've got this. You know, if you wanted to, if you're doing it the way that William's doing it, um, you don't have to follow this pattern. You can really make your own pattern. Um, the tissue paper makes it a lot easier to make one. Okay. So we were thinking of, if you wanted to, before you did this, you could paint your wand first and then let it dry and then you put your texture on. So if you look at the the, fir- the first one that William did here, let me see if I can show you, there you go. Do you see how this kind of, we didn't get the, the brown all the way around it? It was hard to do that. So, but we don't have time to do that in just this hour situation. So if you wanted to, you could paint that wand first and wait for it to dry and then put your texture on and then um, paint over the texture. So when I do mine, because I didn't paint it, um, that paint is not going to go over as well. So if you have the time, I would definitely paint the wand first and then put your texturing or your handles on second. So. Speaking of painting, that's what we're going to move on to next. Okay. So I've got my next texture. I've got all my texture on here. Gina's got all her texture on there. Now your things might be a little loose. If they are, just go ahead and put a little bit of dab of glue right underneath first. This just kind of hold, helps hold it all together. Mm-hmm. So, 
And mine's pretty well sturdy. I could take mine and I could write with it right now like this. So I'm totally writing with it. This is slipped. way fun. All right. I could write a whole story. I could write a fractured fairy tale with this wand. You're going to, too. <laughs> we've, we've kind of promised that we're going to write fractured fairy tales. We're not going to be in the competition, but if you, submit, if you submit your own fractured fairy tale, you get to read ours. So <laughs> that's, that's like just kind of a consolation prize for everybody that participates. Yeah. We don't promise that we're great writers, but we enjoy writing. <laughs> yeah. All right. So now we're just going to take our paintbrush. And we start and painting. I'm going to wait a minute, and I'm going to paint my bottom part first so that my my glue can dry a little bit more. Okay. Now, here's a trick when painting your wand is to go straight up and down along the thing like this. This gives it a nice linear thing. It gives it kind of a wood-toned look. Okay, so I'm going straight up and down just like this. See? Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't need a lot of paint, mm -hmm. thankfully. Just a little bit. It's one of the great things about acrylics. I really like acrylics. So, everything. some of you didn't get paint in with your bags, with your craft bags. So, if you don't have paint at home, come to the library in the community room where all the summer reading stuff is at, and we will give you some paint in a little cup that you could take this home and do this with. Okay. So, yeah, the tissue paper works a lot better for getting in those nicks because you don't have like the big gaps. Yeah. Glue, glue. Move the glue. Oh, move the glue. It's okay. Lauren is filming us. Go ahead, Lauren. You can talk to us. <laughs> Say hi, Lauren. Hello. <laughs> Lauren is awesome. She keeps us from going yeah. crazy. <laughs> At least so, she keeps me from going crazy. That's for sure. Yeah, Lauren was filmed just the other day. She's she's doing um films for the the kids for the eight to eleven year olds, and they made a they charmed a dragon. Which was pretty cute, and you can find that on the Facebook page too. So, yep. You know, one of the great things about our crafts right now is, even though we're doing them specifically geared towards certain ages, is if you want to try a craft from another age group, all the instructions totally are online, good. so you are more than welcome to go onto our website. Yeah. Take a look at what the tweens are doing. The teens, yeah. the tweens can take a look at what you guys are doing. Ooh. You can even do these together as a family if you want to, if you yeah. want to go out and get all the stuff. Yep, this would be a fun family activity. Especially if you're all into Harry Potter. I know when I was younger, we read all the books together as a family. In fact, I don't think I've read them all myself, just that way. Uh, actually, okay. I'm old enough that I read the books as they came out. Well, we did that. <laughs> you did that too? Yeah, we read them as, it a as a family as they came out. In uh, fact, I remember my mom actually stood in line for book number seven. Uh, and we were all waiting. We had this thing where we would read number one, then number two, number, number three, then the fourth one when it came out. And then when the fifth one came out, we reread the whole series and did one through five. Did the whole thing. Did the same thing for number six. But when number seven came out, we were like, yeah, we're not rereading the whole series. We're just going <laughs> to skip straight to seven. Well, I remember whenever, um, I can't remember which book came out, but we were having a family reunion. And all of the cousins all got the book when it first came out. And everybody was, all those kids were downstairs, and they were just reading Harry Potter. And Grandma said, what is going on down there? And all the parents said, it's Harry Potter. <laughs> you know, I still, I still remember the moment. I'm sure a lot of people do. When you first open a copy of Harry Potter 7, normally you get like the little book flap that tells you all about the book and then what's going to happen in it. J.K. Rowling didn't do that with book 7. She simply wrote, we now present the final chapter in the epic tale of Harry Potter. And just reading that just sends shivers up shivers your spine. Shivers up your spine, yeah. I mean, there's been a lot of great books, but out of all the books, I think that one is one of the most influential, most prominent books of our time era. Yeah. It's really cool to have lived through so all those coming out. Here is a big question for you. What other books use magic wands? I know this one. You do know. I mean, are there font wands in Fable Haven? Are there wands in Fable Haven? I don't know. I don't know. What, what books are you? Oh, there's the book titled so. The Wand. I don't know if you've read that. It's oh, a sequel to The Dark Green that. Tunnel. Okay. Which I don't know if you've read that one either. It's an older book and All it's right. out of print. What are you? What are you thinking? I don't know. It's just a question. I was oh, just okay. trying to think. Where is it? Where wands are a significant thing? I don't think they're any. I don't think they're as significant as Harry Potter anywhere. Mm -hmm. Like. 
So the seventh book revolves around an argument over one of the wands. <laughs> All right. So I've pretty much finished painting my wand. As you can see, it looks a lot better than my first attempt. There's not as much white. I still would have, if I would go back and do this again, I would go ahead and I would paint the wand before putting the tissue paper on. Yeah. Let it dry completely. That's what I talked about. Yeah. Anyway. And then. This, sorry, I'm talking. Go ahead. On mine. Uh, mine's working out pretty good. It takes a little bit of time to get over all of that glue that I put on. But if I were going to do this any further, if I had different color, I would go and I would maybe get green and I would go along here and do green where I put the, where I put the glue. That's but right cool now idea. it still looks really, it still looks pretty good. Okay. Can you put some more paint on there for me? Yeah. Thank so you. So the last step I would recommend is if you want your wand to be like really sturdy and last a long time, if you guys have access to Mod Podge. I would go through and I would do a coat of Mod Podge over the, the surface outside. of your wand. I agree. Because that will really, it'll give it a nice shine first off, depending on what kind mm -hmm. of Mod Podge you use. But then it will really hold, especially that tissue paper, it'll really hold that tissue paper together. Yeah. Mine's getting close. I'm almost done. Yeah. So. All right. Anyway. All right. What well, spell should we use? You know, I really want Accio to work. That is the one spell I <laughs> always wanted is I want Accio. Just be able to, like, call anything, summon anything to me. It would be so <laughs> useful for finding lost things. Like, uh -huh. And I'm losing stuff all the time. All right. Kay. Well, that does it for our craft for today. So we will be doing Thanks, another man. one next week. Next week, what is our craft? Oh, what are we doing next week? Oh, is it the origami know? or is it the... It's the house. bookmarks. It's the oh, house yeah. bookmarks. So next making... week is another Harry Potter craft. Sorry, I should be looking. I should be looking at the camera. Anyway, um, yes, we are making bookmarks with tassels on them, and you should have. Um, you you could choose which book, which house you come from, or you could make all four of them, and um, or you could go to Pottermore.com if you have not been sorted into your house and you could get sorted into your house and then you could pick the bookmark that you want to make. For one, I'm a Ravenclaw. You're so a Ravenclaw? I'm totally going to be doing the Ravenclaw bookmark and I look forward to it. Yeah, and I'm going to do the Gryffindor. I'll probably do Gryffindor because when I get sorted, I always get jumped in between Ravenclaw or Gryffindor. So you got to anyway. pick one. There's I know. No I just got to pick. <laughs> anyway, so we hope you have guys had fun and take your wands, and we hope you write a whole bunch of fractured fairy tales with your wands. Just enjoy them. So, yeah. All right. Have a Thanks fun. Thanks for time. joining us today. We'll talk to you later.